In a post-apocalyptic world where humanity is at war for resources, a lucky delivery man is given the chance to live away from all the conflict. But to do so, he will need to survive an almost impossible mission. Today we will recap the story of the Twisted Metal series, from 2023. 20 years ago, the whole world collapsed. For some reason, all the computers were destroyed, the power grids were shut down and the internet stopped working. In order to protect their inhabitants, the authorities began to erect walls around their cities and criminals were driven out to fight for their lives. In the meantime, however, a new category has emerged. A group of people who live outside the walls delivering precious cargo from one city to another. The milkmen are the new letter carriers and risk their lives to ensure their parcels reach their buyers safely. John is one such guy and together with Evelyn, his car, he often gets into battles to prevent his customers' goods from being stolen. This time, he is inside a shopping mall when he is surprised by the arrival of the bandits and ends up being surrounded by them. However, after 20 years of surviving the apocalypse alone, John has acquired a certain skill in battle and manages to dodge attacks while using his weapons to blow his enemy's brains out. After delivering the cargo that was in his trunk, John receives ammunition, fuel and food as payment. Now, he has a new package to deliver in San Francisco and hits the road once again to his next destination. Some mishaps always come his way, like a man trying to steal his car, but that's the kind of problem John is used to solving. When he arrives at the beach, he spots a group of seals and manages to secure his dinner that day. Every night, before going to sleep, the man looks at an old photo he took with his family during his childhood, because even after so much time, he still misses having someone to share his life with. After a few days of travel, John finally arrives at yet another destination and spots dozens of homeless people living on the outskirts of the San Francisco walls, rummaging through the trash discarded by the residents. Upon arriving there, John is invited in as the COO of the city wishes to speak to him personally. After showering and receiving clean clothes, the delivery man meets Raven and is hired to pick up a package in Chicago. To do so, he will have to make a long journey and pass through an extremely dangerous route. However, if he succeeds in his mission, John will receive a free pass to live in San Francisco, which is one of the best walled cities in the United States. Inside, people live as if the apocalypse never happened and appear to be very happy. Faced with the offer of being able to return to the town where he lived with his parents during his childhood, John can't refuse the mission. Then Raven hands him a watch and tells him that the courier has 10 days to return to San Francisco with his package. If he is even a second late, he will not receive his payment. A few kilometers away, two brothers are on the run from the police after stealing a car. During the chase, Loud uses some explosives to try to get rid of the officers, but ultimately they are captured. After their vehicle explodes, the pair are surrounded and Agent Stone gives them two options. At least one of the brothers must be eliminated for their crimes against the law. Therefore, they can choose whether to be eliminated together or whether one will sacrifice themselves to save the other. At this point, both come to the conclusion that they should not separate, but seconds before his sister receives a bullet in the head, Loud takes the revolver and takes his own life. Before leaving, Stone and his men leave the mark of justice on the woman's arm, so that everyone who crosses her path will know that she is a criminal. Before picking up his package, John pays a visit to his old friend to get a map that will guide him to Chicago. He then continues his journey and meets Quiet on the way. As the two try to decide who will get the vehicle, an ice cream truck approaches and they soon realize that they will have to team up if they want to survive the attacks of the deranged clown. During the escape, Sweet Tooth invites the couple to join his show. However, John refuses the invitation and starts shooting at his opponent. At that moment, the clown fights back and, while running away from his machine gun, the pair end up breaking into a hotel with their vehicle. Due to the accident, Evelyn can no longer start and John is trying to fix his car when Sweet Tooth shows up. So Quiet runs away while Milkman gets his ass kicked. However, when a song plays, the clown starts singing and discovers that he and John have the same taste in music. So he decides to give the man a chance to survive. On the outskirts of Las Vegas, Stu and Mike are trapped inside a butcher shop, about to be eliminated by the butchers to serve as food for other humans. Suddenly, the place is invaded and all the cannibals are eliminated with a single, sharp blow to the head. At that moment, Agent Stone and his men show up and invite them to join the team, whose mission is to restore the law in the country. After accepting the offer, the two friends must go through an initiation ritual, where they must eliminate two men who have stolen supplies from a military base. Immediately, Mike eliminates one of the thieves, but Stu doesn't think it's right to punish people who are just trying to survive. So he pretends to have missed the shot, but Mike finishes the job to stop his partner getting into trouble. 
As he prepares for the show, Sweet Tooth tells him that he has found a woman hiding on the premises and plans to keep her locked inside a giant aquarium while he watches her starve till she perishes, just as he did with the previous intruder. However, upon discovering that the woman has the keys to his car, John convinces the clown to free Quiet so that she too can have the privilege of attending his performance. When asked what happens after the show, Sweet Tooth states that if they survive, their guests will be free to go on their way. Then, after a few hours of musical performance, the man finishes his show and asks the couple their opinion. Despite having spent most of the time asleep, John claims it was a fine performance and arouses Sweet Tooth's ire. Noticing that John is lying, he decides to eliminate him, but changes his mind when Quiet expresses her true opinion. The woman claims the show was terrible and only served as a way for her and her partner to take a nap. When he realizes that this strategy is working, John also decides to be honest and states that he did not like the presentation. After getting answers on how he can improve his work, Sweet Tooth frees the couple and then sets fire to his own house. After some more time on the road, the pair arrive at a checkpoint that is not on the map and Quiet spots one of the men who is part of the group that caused the elimination of her brother. At that moment, she is seized by an uncontrollable rage and rushes to attack Shepard. But before she can reach him, they are both electrocuted with stun guns and immobilized. The pair are then taken to a former Detran and wait in the interrogation room while officers search their car. Upon discovering that John was using a map to guide his way, Shepard immediately informs Agent Stone and they both go to pay the couple a visit. When asked where he got that map, Milkman claims he found it on the road and says Stone can have it if he wants. However, the truth is that the agent needs to find out who is drawing those maps in order to eliminate him. Stone has spent decades building checkpoints, but the person who made those maps knows how to avoid almost all of them. So he orders his men to do whatever it takes to get the cartographer's name. However, even after suffering several hours of brutal attacks, John refuses to snitch his friend. So, as punishment for not contributing to the law, he and Quiet are sent to the red line. Luckily, Stu is assigned to escort them to the gate. After opening it, the couple discovers that there is a cliff on the other side. The rule says that if they refuse to jump, they must be shot in the head and their bodies thrown down. However, unlike the other cops, Stu is a merciful guy and can't eliminate them. So he decides to help the prisoners escape, and while John searches for Evelyn's key, Quiet goes after Shepard. Upon finding him, the woman manages to take revenge and eliminates the policeman with several blows to the head. At that moment, Mike is walking through the police station when he finds two handcuffs lying on the ground and informs the other officers that Stu has released the prisoners. So the alarm is triggered and the couple manage to narrowly escape, but Stu ends up being left behind and is arrested by his colleagues as a traitor. That night, the couple is driving down the road when they hear a noise and John turns off his headlights so as not to be detected. Suddenly, several headlights come on around their car and they discover they are being surrounded by a convoy of trucks. Just then, the back of the vehicle in front opens up and Evelyn is pushed into it. Watts then orders the pair out of the car and states that she does not intend to hurt them. The trio then crosses to the truck carriage next door and the pair discover that there is a small colony of people living in there. While getting to know the locals, Quiet gets a prosthetic for her amputated finger and soon after, the strangers are introduced to the matriarch. The old woman tells him that she is very ill and asks John to fetch some medicine for her, since he is a milkman. If he manages to return to the truck with the medicine, he will receive some guns as payment. Upon arriving at the location indicated by the coordinates he received from Watts, they are greeted by a woman who offers the strangers a glass of tea. Seconds later, the couple starts to get it all out and their bodies are paralyzed. Then Amber says they will be unable to move for some time and asks them a few questions. While they are helpless, John and Quiet realize that Amber uses human remains to fertilize her plants and believe that they will be the next to compost her garden. However, upon reading the letter sent by Watts, the woman realizes that they are not a threat and helps them regain their movements. Amber then asks for forgiveness for poisoning the couple and claims she mistook them for members of a group called Hollyman. After assembling a bouquet of medicinal plants, Amber says goodbye to the visitors and the pair drive back to the truck. When they arrive at the truck, the couple discovers that those plants are not meant to cure the old woman, but to allow her to perish without feeling any more pain. After drinking the tea made by Watts, the old woman bids farewell to her granddaughter and passes on to her the responsibility of taking charge of the convoy. Minutes later, the woman has perished and her family members gather around her to say goodbye. After the wake, Watts abandons the convertible on the road and uses a bomb to blow it up, just as her grandmother directed her to do. As everyone celebrates the matriarch's passing, Watts contacts Amber to break the news and thank his former girlfriend for her help. The next day, John and Quiet hit the road again and the woman hides a mysterious plant she stole from Amber's garden. On the road, 
they come across an accident and decide to check the vehicle for supplies. At that moment, Quiet finds two bottles of beer and hands one of them to John. After drinking it, the milkman realizes he has been poisoned and ends up passing out. The woman then makes her way back to the police station. Quiet knows she won't be able to feel at peace until she avenges her brother's elimination, so she knocks John out so he won't want to risk his life by going after her on this mission. Meanwhile, Sweet Tooth arrives at the police station and uses an explosive to get rid of the guard. By this time, Quiet is already infiltrated in a car and eliminates the officers right after crossing the identification barrier. While observing the statue made in honor of Agent Stone, Quiet ends up being unmasked by a police officer and narrowly manages to escape. For helping the prisoners escape, Stu has been sentenced to elimination and is about to be sent over the cliff when the clown bursts into the room and eliminates the armed policeman. When he wakes up, John realizes that he has been captured by an old man who thought he was eliminated. Upon discovering that Milkman is alive, the man tries to attack him, but ends up striking his own eye with a knife when John jumps on him to defend himself. At that moment, he finds a note left by Quiet on the windshield of the car and discovers that the woman has returned to the police station seeking revenge. After freeing the prisoners, Sweet Tooth paves the way for his new followers to escape from jail and eliminates all the officers who stand in his way. Again, Stu was about to be eliminated when the clown shows up to save him and eliminates the guard who was planning to attack him. From that moment on, the two guys start a great friendship and Stu spots Mike hiding in the warehouse behind some boxes. Despite having been snitched by his friend, he doesn't give him up. With nowhere else to go, Stu decides to go on the road with the clown and all the other prisoners who have been rescued appoint Sweet Tooth as their new leader. When he learns that Quiet has returned, Stone contacts the woman via radio and invites her to a duel. Upon arriving at the agreed location, Quiet is surprised by an unexpected attack and suffers a car accident. After hitting his opponent's vehicle, the agent sends a missile to eliminate her, but the woman manages to survive. When she gets out of the car, she becomes the target of a new attack, but ends up being saved by John. Instead of picking up his package, the milkman goes to rescue his partner and carries her body into the car. Upon waking, the woman is furious when she discovers that she is a long way from the police station and Stone is still alive. However, while arguing with John, Quiet remembers that he risked his life to save her and starts kissing him. After spending a few hours together in a ball pool, the woman wakes up and decides to continue her revenge plan, but John tries to stop her. Before she could start her journey, a strong storm breaks out and they both have to return to the diner to avoid being struck by lightning. As they wait for the storm to pass, John invites Quiet to accompany him to San Francisco and states that after she learns the woman helped him complete his delivery, Raven will allow her to become a resident of the city as well. However, her partner refuses to live in a city again, as she experienced terrible things in Orange City with Loud. A few years ago, Quiet got a work contract for her and her brother. At the end of four years, the two would receive a ranch as a reward, where they could spend the rest of their lives. However, when they arrived in Orange City, they found out that the job was not at all what they were thinking. In fact, both became prisoners of wealthy families who used their servants' body parts as jewelry. One day, the two brothers managed to meet in the pantry of the cafeteria where Loud worked. They had been in that hellish place for three years and the only thing that gave them the courage to survive was the hope of having a better life soon. However, while they were talking, the manager of the cafeteria appeared and intended to punish Quiet for being in a forbidden place. Just then, Loud speaks up to defend his sister and was about to have her neck slashed when a female shooter appears and the manager has to calm customers while the woman is eliminated. That night, Loud was dragged out of the establishment and his ear was torn off to be part of his employer's collection. When the man was about to lose his life, Quiet appeared and eliminated the guards. She then slit the manager's throat and fled that town with her brother. Discovering all the suffering the woman has been through, John hugs her and tries to console her. Then, after dinner, the couple spends the night together and, the next morning, heads for Chicago. When they arrive at the location where John is supposed to pick up the package, the pair enter a shed and collect the package that is inside a secret compartment. After completing half the mission, they hit the road again on their way to San Francisco to deliver the goods to Raven. Halfway there, John decides to make a pit stop for gas, and while he goes to buy food, Quiet gets gas. At that moment, she meets Mary and, after filling the gallon, they both enter the bar. When the blonde spots John, she rushes to kiss him and then attacks him with a punch to the face. The last time they saw each other, John ditched her to be a milkman and now Mary has also joined the delivery crew. When she finds out that Quiet is with her ex, the woman invites them out for a drink and reminisces about some of the stories she experienced alongside John. Now that he has the support of new allies, Sweet Tooth will pay a visit to the young offender's prison where he grew up. 
As a teenager, he had a TV show and was a famous actor. However, when he realized that his fans liked Billy more than him, the man attacked the dog and was sent to Blackfield Prison. After that, not even his parents came to visit him, and 10 years later, he had the chance to take revenge. When the apocalypse began, Sweet Tooth and the other inmates were released. Then, he went after his parents and left them locked up in his old cell until they rotted. Upon discovering the truth about his new friend's past, Stu realizes that he is completely insane and becomes afraid of becoming the next victim. After paying a visit to his parents, the clown goes to find the rest of the group and discovers that all the other members of his team are eliminated. Just as Sweet Tooth was about to be shot, Stu manages to save him. After stuffing his face with booze, John goes to relieve himself and Mary starts interrogating him. The woman asks what he's doing in the neighborhood and Milkman ends up telling her about the deal he made with Raven. When they return to the bar, Mary spreads the news to all her friends and the group unites to steal John's merchandise in order to negotiate with Raven for a place to live in San Francisco. At this point, everyone starts fighting among themselves to decide who will get the package and Mary attacks Quiet. The woman is jealous that her boyfriend has fallen in love with another woman and takes out all her anger, but ends up getting axed in the chest. At the end of the battle, only Slam and the couple remain standing. When the cops go after Sweet Tooth, Mike is relieved to find that his friend is alive, but is in shock when he sees his colleague's necks crushed by the clown. Then the man attacks him, but Stu manages to convince him to let the cop go with the promise that Mike will help him find Stone. After surviving yet another battle, the couple return to the road with their package in hand and, while driving, Quiet finds a photo of John and his family. Suddenly, the photograph flies out of the window and they have to get out of the car to look for it. However, when Quiet finds it, the car is stolen and John is furious. With no other way to get around, the pair have to walk down the road and the woman apologizes for what happened, but is completely ignored. All John can think about at the moment is what he needs to do to get Evelyn back and Quiet promises he will help him. As a child, John was separated from his parents during the apocalypse and had his car stolen by a woman. Alone and hungry, his only option was to seek shelter in the woods. While trying to grab the fruit that was on top of a tree, the boy slipped and that's how he found Evelyn. From that day on, the car became his real home and since then they have never been apart. Thanks to the strong bond John has established with Evelyn over the past 20 years, he spares no effort to get her back. So the pair use disguises to break into the Hollyman hideout and try to blend in. Minutes later, Preacher shows up and then the men who stole Evelyn hand him the car keys. At that point, John challenges Preacher to a duel and the winner gets to keep the vehicle. Early in the fight, Quiet realizes that his partner has no chance of emerging victorious and decides to act. While everyone is entertained with the battle, the woman attacks the mechanic and, when the man is unconscious, she steals his car keys. After losing the fight, John is locked in a cage, but Quiet shows up to free him. The woman informs him that she got the keys to another vehicle, but the milkman refuses to leave Evelyn behind. Frustrated at not being able to convince her partner to leave, Quiet drives off and John rushes to meet his vehicle. Immediately, he is caught by Preacher and attacks him before the man has a chance to shoot him. The two men then start a new duel and, just as John was about to be eliminated, the vehicle explodes. Upon seeing the explosion, Quiet is in despair as she comes to the realization that her partner is eliminated. So she has no choice but to make her way alone. Luckily, however, John was saved by Evelyn's hood, which cushioned the impact of the explosion and prevented him from being seriously injured. After the accident, all the Hollymans leave the site and John holds a funeral for his car while remembering the good times he had with him. Now that they've captured a cop who knows Agent Stone's location, Sweet Tooth and Stu go after him to avenge the eliminations of their comrades. Since she no longer has a co-pilot, Quiet has to drive while following the map and ends up having an accident on the road. As she tries to push the car back onto the track, a looter approaches to steal her package. However, before the man could pick up the package, he is hit by an arrow that was shot by Amber. The woman then offers Quiet a lift and she soon discovers that John is also on the train. At this point, he approaches and apologizes to his partner, but Quiet shows no reaction, although she is relieved to know that John is okay. Later, as they repair the car to continue on their way to San Francisco, John again tries to get the woman forgiveness. Quiet cannot accept the fact that she has been abandoned. She says she was very upset when she thought she had lost her friend, but claims that John doesn't care because he only thinks about himself. However, after receiving a nice gift and a sincere apology, Quiet decides to forgive him. Suddenly, they receive word that Stone and his men are attacking the convoy and join Watts in the battle. After finishing the repairs, the couple decides to call the new vehicle Road Hill and, after a few minutes on the road, they arrive at the place where their enemies are. Everything seemed peaceful until Stone fires a shot, 
which serves as a signal for the other officers to begin their attack. Just then, Watts prepares to get into her race car, and suddenly two vehicles explode. The car's hit belonged to the police officers, who were eliminated by Sweet Tooth. When entering the battle, the clown orders Stu to set his head on fire and his appearance becomes even more threatening. Then, the three groups start a war and Sweet Tooth helps the convoy to eliminate the cops. When they are surrounded by vehicles, the couple shoots at their enemies and kisses during the explosion. At this point, they are surprised by the clown, who is happy to see his old friends again. The pair then become targets of Stone, who sends a missile to chase them, but Watts lures the projectile with her race car and causes it to hit her enemies. Amber is driving the truck when her neck is hit by a gunshot. Immediately, her partner tries to help her stop the wound, at which point the clown blows up the vehicle. Furious, Stu asks the reason for the attack, since these people were not enemies, and discovers that the man blew up the truck just for fun. Afraid of being the next target, Mike tries to shoot Sweet Tooth, but ends up being captured. The clown then orders Stu to eliminate that guy, but he decides to shoot the man, as he knows he is extremely dangerous. Stone then attacks the ice cream truck, but the clown manages to fight back and gets shot in the abdomen while trying to destroy the windshield. Finally, he is run over by Stu, while the man flees with Mike in another vehicle. Determined to end the battle, Quiet stops fleeing and runs towards the police officer. When the two vehicles meet, Stone flips over and still manages to survive. The woman tries to wake John when she is dragged out of the roadkill. She is about to be shot in the head when her partner throws an axe at the agent's face. At this point, Quiet stands up to shoot, but decides to give him the choice of dying slowly or taking his own life. Then, as his enemies walk away, Stone shoots himself in the head. Despite the explosion, Amber manages to survive and is saved by Watts. A few hours later, the couple finally arrives in San Francisco and delivers the package to Raven. However, the woman refuses to welcome Quiet into her town and reminds John of the deal they made. As such, the man states that he will leave with his partner. Upon hearing this, Quiet decides to intervene, as he knows he will have a much better life on the other side of that wall. To stop John from following her, she shoots him in the shoulder and asks the medical team to take him inside where he can receive proper treatment. After her friend is taken away, Quiet goes on her way and Raven eats the ice cream John has just brought her. The truth is, that mission was just for the woman to test his skills and find out if John is capable of carrying out another extremely important task. A month later, Milkman is now fully recovered from his injury and familiar with his new home. However, despite living the life of his dreams and eating the best food, he misses Quiet terribly. One day, while talking to Raven, John states that he is planning to leave the city to find her, so the woman decides to give him some extra reasons to stay in San Francisco. At this point, Raven takes John to the house where he was raised as a child and hands him some photos that were taken at that time. Seeing his parents and sister again, the man recovers several memories from his past that had been buried and remembers that he fled in his father's car the day the apocalypse began. However, even after accessing all these memories, John remains determined to find quiet again and Raven sees no other option but to tell him the truth. The woman claims that she recruited John to participate in a tournament, whose only rule is to survive. The best drivers in the country will be invited to participate in this race and the big winner will have his greatest wish come true. Raven's plan is to use John to win the contest and then she will receive the prize on his behalf. At that moment, Quiet is on the highway on her way to Topeka when the wheels of her car are punctured and she is surrounded by a group of women. The group leader then states that she will need Quiet's help to find her brother. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.